everyone. As you know, most of my videos are about food science topics, but sometimes it's really critical to think about how adults learn and how organizations uh, contribute to the learning environment. And so I am discussing a model of learning called Elmore's Modes of Learning, and it was developed by Richard Elmore from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And he had um, done some research very specifically about how organizations structure learning strategy or modes of learning as he titles it and how the learner interacts in that space and how the organization contributes to the learning environment. Each of these modes has a unique role to play in delivery of education and different learners thrive in different environments. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to differentiate between different learning delivery models and how they work with different learning modes. And you'll be able to identify what style of learning works best for you using these modes. Again, there's multiple models of adult education and modes of learning, but let's discover one that I think has a lot of merit here. So the first quadrant in this mode of learning is what's called the hierarchical individual model. And this is perhaps what you think of when you think of the classic classroom. There's a teacher up at front and there's a student sitting there being fed knowledge. And it's a very directional learning experience. Learning goals within this is that it's all about the content. That content is what the individuals are learning and it's easy to then measure if people have learned it or not learned it. In this mode, there's a very distinct direction for the responsibility for learning in that individuals are responsible for their success and then the authority or the, um, the teacher who's in charge is accountable for measuring that growth. Learning happens in this style of environment from the efforts that people invest individually. And the teachers are the conduits of that ability, that they are the gateways of where that knowledge is coming from, and they define what learners must know or acquire to be able to uh, do the attainment of that. In this, in this structure, it is a really hierarchical, definition in that there's someone in charge and then everyone else is underneath that individual. That there is an adult often who's leading, the professor, the teacher, and then everyone else who is following the rules as, as they're defined will succeed. And so success in this learning model is very much defined by those classical Met, uh, methods of assessment, so tests, quizzes, essays, and so on. This is a very classical classroom model, and there's there's merit to this classroom model. It works quite effectively in very large groups. It works very effectively in um, hierarchical organizations. Now there's another model. This would be a hierarchical collective model, and this is one where community values are defining what the goals are going to be. And the learners have to be integrated into that values system to be part of the successful learning environment. Who is responsible for learning? Well, there's more communal definition, but it is still one where there's that institutional or higher level definition of what needs to be learned that's external from the learners themselves. And so there needs to be a strong institutional attitude defined by the leadership to make sure that there's strong buy-in from the learners themselves and that the values are going to be well adopted across the entire community. So learning comes from a lot of collaboration and a lot of working together and the adult or the teachers are going to be focused on facilitating group works and communal 
community function. Success in this model is often based off of the, the product of the entire group rather than the product of an individual. And so this, this model works really well for larger group type activities or larger project style learning. And this is a model where some of the social skills of group work and leadership and teamwork are able to be better measured and be defined as part of success. And then we've got the distributed individual model. And perhaps if you're taking this online course, you are actually already experiencing. Um, I, again, I'm putting up a lot of content in a way that's distributing knowledge to individuals around the world. So in a distributed individual model, learners are learning for their own sake and not necessarily because they have to. And this is exhibited commonly in many of the um, massive online courses that are available, the MOOCs as they call them. Distributed individual works great for lifelong learning in that people can go and engage in the learning process on their own without a hierarchy defining what needs to be learned or not learned. That individuality is really critical. And so while the image here shows online learning and learning through um, internet-based technologies as part of this, it could easily be done in libraries or even in many adult learning situations where people pick and choose what they want to learn or not want to learn on their own, on their own terms. So learning is part of, so, it, it, using Elmore's words, a biological imperative. People learn because they need to learn and they want to learn and they just have an innate desire to be part of that learning. And because it's an individual process though, there is not necessarily someone there to facilitate and walk through and explain what is being seen. And so there needs to be a strong level of self-motivation to be successful at this. There is minimal social structure in this model because again, learning through individual actions is what's in place here. And what is required though for successful distributed individual learning models is that there is a, a strong resource base. Something that in my own research I've noted, there's not a lot of distributed individual learning materials for food science. We have some great food science programs around the world, but most of them are institutionalized and there's not been an effort to distribute the materials in a way that can be used in an individual learning situation. How do you define success in this model? Well, it's up to you. <laughs> Did you succeed? If you got what you came looking for, then you have succeeded. It's not through attainment of degrees or diplomas or certain credentials that distributed individual learning is successful. Now that said, there are distributed individual learning platforms where certificates are part of the goal. Last but not least, distributed collective learning environments. And if you've ever been in one of my classroom courses, this is the model that I often work under, where there isn't a strong hierarchy. Instead, there's a sense of strong community orientation where learners and teachers almost blur between who is, who is the learner and who's the teacher. And in some cases, the learners are teaching each other in some cases, the teacher is facilitating self-directed learning. And so distributed collective learning is often such where learners are learning what they care about, but they're working in a collaborative model where they're synergizing off the strengths of one another. Usually though, within a distributive collective learning environment, there's still someone is in charge to make sure that chaos doesn't ensue and that there are some goals and structures in place for successful social interaction and successful learning. And so learning happens still because of that biological imperative. People want to learn for the sake of learning, 
but it is done through social interaction and engagement. It's done through um, interacting with all the different components of our society and all the different resources that are available to us. And how do we define success here? Well, again, it's defined by the learning community. It's defined by whoever the collective is and what that collective defines it to be. I use this model quite a bit because I consider our distributed collective of the classroom to include much of the food manufacturing sector. And so many of the definitions of success for our classroom activities are actually defined by what the industry would be doing in a comparable sense. So you may have picked up, if I go backwards through my slides here, a distributed collective often works well in a classroom setting for project-based learning where students are leading their own projects. Distributed individual, this is where people are often doing online learning or self-study just for the purposes of learning. Hierarchical collective, this is more commonly seen in a classroom type setting, but is common in other adult learning environments, such as when a human resources group needs to do in-service training for organizations, where there is a sense of purpose and a shared mutual goal, but there's still someone up at the front of the room delivering content. And last but not least, this hierarchical individual model is, is still what we see in most classrooms. But bit by bit, we're seeing opportunities for merging other models into this classical classroom setting. Each has a role to play. Each has benefits within an adult learning environment. And each has a reason why it may be more successful for you as an individual learner. But think and reflect on how these models work for you and identify where those learning opportunities are that are going to help you succeed most of all. That's it for now. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them and I am always happy to discuss more because again, my favorite learning environments are these distributed collective environments. Take care and we'll talk soon.